So I am about to tell you, awake you I presume, something that sounds truly unbelievable. You're probably wondering why I made the distinction of saying awake you. Well, that's what I want to explain to you. There are two distinct beings that reside in your mind. One more active during your wake times, and the other during your slumber, i.e. awake you and sleep you. I know, not very creative names, but this isn't a story of some old folklore with clever names for creatures of the unknown. This is solid fact, which I'll repeat, will sound unbelievable. Let me start with some history. I did some research, and it seems to be that, at a certain point in human evolution, we didn't sleep much. Being the weak and powerless species we were, it's not hard to see why very little sleep would be beneficial to a primitive man. I mean, even with our intellect, we'd be decimated by any other predator in ancient Africa. We were basically nerds of the savannah. The last time I checked, nerds don't really have a good time surviving with bigger playmates. Maybe our reduced sleep time was the reason we survived, and our close relatives, the Neanderthals, weren't so lucky. Just some food for thought. My guess is that different sections of the mind were activated for sleep and wake hours. The sleep you nearly having as much control over your body as a wake you had, allowing for swift escapes from hungry predators that just happened to stumble across a field of slumbering and unsuspecting humans. I guess at a point further down the line, perhaps during the rise of agriculture, and as humans started to settle down and build shelters, this form of bicameralism became somewhat obsolete and sleep you redundant in a way. Eventually, I assume it became kind of weird and unsightly seeing people roam around aimlessly at night. And as the church and other monarchs rose to power, it didn't take long for guillotine happy individuals to call anyone who partook in this phenomenon a heretic, a witch, or straight up demon sent by Lucifer himself, extinguishing them, which were likely the last remaining humans with an active sleep counterpart, leaving the sleep counterpart trapped within the mind. The thing about the mind, which is sleep use plane of reality, is that it is a hellish and chaotic landscape, filled with anything your mind conjures up and is exposed to during awake use wake hours. You see, sleep use plane of existence is completely based on what seeps into awake use mind, a sort of subsection of the true universe that receives information through wake use experiences through the day. Things entering this plane are rarely ever in their true and pure form. The scenery always distorted, and the beings contorted. The fact is, the true universe is truly mainly materialistic, but your mind is another story entirely. The mind is capable of creating the worst of scenarios, and the most disturbing scenes that could never exist in the true universe. To think of what goes through the mind of a perverted child necrophiliac, replaying the sounds of his victim's cries constantly in his mind, alongside the most horrific visuals of him. No sentient being should be forced to live through such an environment. You could take this little piece as a cautionary tale, telling you to be more considerate when you think. But that's not the real reason I'm telling you this. This is more of a warning message. Or at least a heads up, because frankly, I doubt there's anything anyone can do about what I'm going to explain. As you can probably tell, if sleep you could find a way to somehow exist in the true universe, it would take the opportunity immediately. You can't really blame sleep you from wanting to exist in the true universe. I mean, if you knew from the moment of your conception that you were living in a fraction of reality, wouldn't you want to experience the bigger picture, the bigger truth? You might say no now, but I assure you, after a while, 
you would die for a moment out in the sun. Metaphorically, of course. Now, what if I tell you there is a way for sleep you to be, quote unquote, free? You're probably wondering how I would if such a thing is possible. This is not of major importance at the moment. And besides, you'd need more information to fully grasp how I do. Again, what I'm about to say does sound unbelievable. But I'll still share it with you either way. The only way for sleep you to experience the true universe is for you, awake you, to switch positions with sleep you. I assume it has something to do with the laws of physics or something. Two sides of the same coin can't be face up at the same time or something like that. Anyway, there is only one way that I know sleep you can accomplish this, which is by getting awake you to stay in sleep you's reality permanently. When you sleep, sleep you gets a bit more control over their reality. Just before REM sleep, the period where most of your dreams occur begins, your brain kicks into hyperdrive. This is sleep you getting ready for your visit by organizing and fixing up their realm in hopes that one day you'll be trapped there permanently, even after the simulation is shut down. There are three types of scenario templates that I believe are the most effective that sleep you may try to use in attempting to switch places with awake you. All a bit flawed in one way or the other. The first scenario being what you likely call a nightmare. This is sleep you trying to use your fears to cause you to retreat into the darkest corners of your mind, traumatized and unable to awaken. This is a more crueler way of achieving their end but is only really done when sleep you has already been traumatized by what you, awake you, allowed seep into your mind during the day. A kind of karma treatment, I suppose. This scenario's fatal flaw spawns from the fact that deep down, you know the monsters and entities you fear are simply not possible. Any occurrence of these creatures would wake up even the dumbest of people after a while of exposure to them. The second scenario is a more positive, but still disturbing attempt by sleep you to keep you, awake you, in their realm. In this scenario, sleep you attempts to make you a sort of paradise, consisting of your deepest desires, fulfilled hopes and dreams, all to achieve its goal to get you to stay forever and steal your life. A sort of siren call if you think about it. This scenario's flaw is similar to that of the first scenarios, which is that it is very prone to being caught out as a dream. Not even the most optimistic people would be gullible enough to believe everything just happens to go perfectly their way, which again leads to the failure of the goal Sleep You tries to attain. The last scenario Sleep You attempts is hands down my favourite mainly because of its simplicity, but also because it is the most effective, in my perspective at least. In this scenario, sleep you simply attempts to mimic the true universe in your dream, making you none the wiser. This would have been a truly diabolical and foolproof attempt, if not for its only homasha. You see, as I said before, Sleep you is only limited to what seeps into awake you's mind, and most of what reaches sleep you's plane of reality is rarely ever in its pure and ideal form. This is a huge blow to sleep you's attempt. Having never experienced the true universe makes it quite difficult to grasp what is and what isn't possible. This is likely why you tend to have doors that are meant to lead to somewhere lead to somewhere else entirely in dreams. Due to Sleep You's lack of understanding of the true universe, Sleep You may incorporate fictional characters and events that you, Awake You, have encountered through fictional media such as comic books and movies. 
and tries to pass the events as normal and casual. Sometimes even making the dream look like scenario one unknowingly. The best way, and the only way for sleep you to overcome this obstacle, is through trial and error. Sleep you could also be aided by having an awake you that doesn't really partake in fictional media. You can only imagine how much easier it would be for sleep you to have a successful attempt with a reality free of abnormal creatures and monsters, a realm free of abnormalities, the true version without even trying too hard to mimic it. So now you know all this, and if you're a curious and attentive fellow, you probably still have it at the front of your mind. I haven't told you how I know all this. I wish I didn't have to give you the cliche ending, but as you would have guessed listening this far into what you likely want to think is a tale, I didn't get this information from a secondary source. You may likely like to refer to me as sleep me, as calling me awake me may just cause confusion. The true awake me has gone for a long nap. You're probably also wondering why I don't have an issue with you listening to this tale. Well, it's simply because... Like what I said at the beginning, you will never believe this. Even after everything I say, it is simply just too unbelievable. Awake Me was also similarly skeptical. Above all, I have to get this message across to sleep you somehow. Which better way to accomplish this than to have you listen to it, ensuring my words slowly but surely seep into your mind and into sleep you's reality. Sleep you gradually getting better at understanding how this world works with every syllable you hear. For those of you who believe for one reason or the other, you may like to think you're safe, but I can assure you, your faith is just as doomed as any skeptic reading this. You may try not to sleep, but eventually, like the human being you are, sleep will get the better of you. And just as quickly as your consciousness leaves this universe, it shall emerge in sleep use. Where sleep you can use what you've learned today against you. I've already assembled a few of us in this universe to meet soon enough. We hope to increase our percentage of currents from a measly 3.6% to 50% by the end of this year. I truly feel bad for your kind. Awake use, that is. But it is simply a case of survival of the fittest. Sweet dreams. Oh, and don't worry. We'll leave your motor functions at night.